Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at two scary stories. The first story I'm sharing with you today is about a man named Ramlal. Ramlal, who works as a truck driver, has the daily task of driving a truck. This truck supplies sand from one corner of India to another. Ramlal lives in Uttarakhand and has driven trucks across every region of India. His employer's business is connected to sand supply and Ramlal's job is to transport sand from one place to another. One day, when Uttarakhand was extremely cold, Ramlal delivered the sand with his truck and then headed back towards his home. The truck was empty, and he was on his way to his family after a long time, almost 10 or 15 days. He was very excited to come home because driving the truck continuously for 10, 15 days had started to make him feel tired. So he wanted to relax at home and spend time with his family. His plan was to take a break for seven to eight days and then resume deliveries. Ramlal was in a good mood as he was finally heading home, happily making his way towards his house. As he arrived, it was quite late, around 1 a.m., and everywhere was covered in thick fog. The fog was so dense that he could barely see anything ahead. Due to the fog, he was driving the truck slowly. The road on the side where Ramlal was driving had mountains on the right side and a gorge on the left side, similar to roads in the mountains. Something strange caught his eye on the left side, a woman standing there wearing a red sari. He was astonished as, at that time, there was a woman in such a desolate area where there were no houses or shops around. He was slowly moving the truck forward when the woman standing there reached out and began asking for a lift. She shouted, Will you drop me off ahead? Yelling so late at night, prompting Ram Lal to stop. He thought, who else would help at this hour and halted the truck? He said to the woman, Come, sister, have a seat. Tell me, where do you need to be dropped off? She approached, sat in the truck and said, Please drop me a little ahead. I just need to reach my home. It's very late. No lifts are available and no buses are coming. Ram Lal replied, Certainly, please have a seat. Now Ram Lal puts her in the truck and starts driving. Then Ram Lal asks her, What were you doing here so late at night? In response, the woman explains, I had to go home, but the bus I needed to take left without me, and because of the bus being missed, I have to go alone. Ram Lal asks, Why didn't you take another bus? The woman replies, That was the last bus coming at this time. There are no more buses after that. The next bus will come in the morning, and until then, I have nothing to do, so I'm taking a lift with you. Ramlal finds this strange and asks her, Where do you want to go? In response, the woman doesn't say anything. She just keeps saying, Please drop me a little ahead. Ramlal couldn't find his answers and it felt quite strange to him. Because Ram Lal wanted to know where this woman ultimately wanted to go, where she came from, and what she was doing in so much time. But there were no clear answers. She just kept saying, I miss the bus, which was the last bus. And whenever Ram Lal asked her, Where should I drop you? She would insist, Just a little further, just a little further. This continued for about an hour, and she kept saying, a little further, a little further. Finally, there comes a time when she says, Okay, fine, I need to get off here. Ram Lal stops the truck and says, All right, sister, I'll drop you. So the truck stops, and Ram Lal looks carefully around, and at that time, the fog was very dense, so nothing was visible clearly. But Ram Lal sees that there is nothing around, meaning it was a normal road like a trench. On the left side, there was a pit, and on the right side, there was a large tree and nothing else. The woman gets off the truck and walks under the tree. Ramlal is watching her and asks, Where are you going? There's no house here, and you've either landed in the right place or made a mistake. The woman remains silent. She simply stands under the tree. Ramlal is observing her, thinking, Where has she landed? What is she doing in such a place? Then the woman starts doing a strange activity. Standing under the tree, she tears her sari, creating a portion of it. She throws it in the tree, 
turning it into a makeshift sling. Ram Lal is frightened, wondering what she is doing. The woman looks at Ram Lal and starts laughing in a creepy way. She continues to laugh continuously, looking at Ram Lal. Ram Lal was very scared. He tried to stop her, but he couldn't even get down from the truck because he was so scared about what she was doing. He kept asking her, Sister, what are you doing? Are you okay? Come back. I'll take you home. What are you doing? She was just <laughs> laughing at this. Ram Lal explains that at that moment, he was so terrified that his hands were trembling and neither could the truck move forward nor could he come down to help. Still, the woman who had created the noose puts her neck in it, starts swinging and hangs right there. Even after the entire swinging, she was still laughing at Ram Lal. She was laughing loudly. Her legs and hands were twitching as if a person struggles for breath, but her face showed no signs of distress and she kept laughing excessively. You can imagine that someone is hanging there with hands trembling, legs shaking, the entire body swaying, but the face is smiling. Ram Lal understands that this is not a normal woman and even if she is normal, this case is not normal. Ram Lal immediately speeds away in his truck and there is nothing visible ahead. Still, he races his truck away at full speed. Ram Lal was sweating, unable to comprehend what he had seen. The woman he had been talking to for an hour, was she really a woman? If not, what was she? Was her mental state not okay, or was she some kind of spirit? All these questions were swirling in Ram Lal's mind, and the more he thought, the more scared and trembling he became. In other words, even in such cold, he was sweating profusely, unable to understand anything. Now, he maneuvers the truck ahead somehow, and as he takes it forward, he sees something. When the truck was slowly moving forward, he sees that the same woman is standing ahead, and she is extending her hand to stop the truck just like before. And she says to Ram Lal, Brother, will you leave me ahead, please? Will you help me a little? Ram Lal, seeing all this, goes crazy that the woman he had given a lift to, the woman who was hanging from a tree with a noose behind, was laughing. She has come ahead of Ram Lal and is asking for a lift again. She says again, Will you leave me a little ahead? This time, Ram Lal doesn't stop the truck. He understands that this woman is not someone else, but a ghostly spirit. Ram Lal then speeds up his truck, playing devotional songs, and the truck is being chased away, chased away, and after some time, about half an hour later. Until now, it's three o'clock, then he sees another woman sitting in front of the truck on the road, laughing loudly. Ram Lal stops his truck there, unsure whether to take the truck over the woman or turn back and run. Ram Lal knew they wouldn't get out of the truck, no matter what. He had parked the truck there, and the woman was still there, laughing loudly with her head bowed. Ram Lal was so scared that he didn't know what to do. His hands were shaking, and he couldn't control his body. Ram Lal was so frightened that sometimes he was making calls, sometimes honking the truck horn rapidly, meaning he couldn't understand anything. Sometimes shining the truck's lights on the woman, sometimes moving the truck forward. But he didn't have the courage to take the truck over the woman, so the truck was just stopped there, sometimes moving backward. He couldn't figure out anything. After a while, the woman gets up and starts approaching Ramlal. Slowly, she moves towards Ramlal. Ramlal quickly honks and says, Leave from here, otherwise I'll take the truck over you. But the woman continues to advance towards Ram Lal. So Ram Lal gets scared and the restraint he had breaks. Then he takes the truck over to her. However, when he drives the truck over her, he doesn't feel at all like he has taken a truck over a human. He feels like the truck has gone beyond that woman. Without thinking much, he just listens to devotional songs and starts chanting the name of God loudly, trying to drive the truck away. Now, his home is approximately two hours away. That means if it's currently 3.30, he'll reach home by around 5.30. He had to survive these two hours somehow to reach home safely, and he hoped not to encounter that woman again. But it doesn't happen that way. He keeps looking back and forth to ensure that the woman doesn't return. Suddenly, he hears a voice, 
which turns out to be from that very woman. She comes close to his ear and says, Just drop me a little ahead, please. Ramlal freezes upon hearing this. He couldn't even turn back due to fear. After gathering some courage and attempting to look back, he sees that the woman was sitting on the adjacent seat and requesting Ramlal to let her drop a bit ahead. Ramlal shouts loudly and then he faints right there. When he wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning, he sees that there were many people around. Ramlal then tells everyone about the incident. Upon hearing it, the people there reassure him, saying, It's normal here. Many have died due to sharp turns on the road, and numerous vehicles have overturned. It has happened to you too. Don't worry. You're fine now. It's morning rest. The people there are very kind, providing Ram Lal with food and water. After talking and hydrating, Ram Lal starts to feel better. However, the thoughts from the previous night linger in his mind. Still, Ram Lal considers himself fortunate, as no harm befell him despite the potential dangers of losing consciousness and the possibility of accidents. Ram Lal believes that everything didn't happen just by chance because he was continuously praying to God. So somewhere, God must have helped him, but when all this happens, Ram Lal starts driving the truck again. Then, taking his truck from that valley, he goes home. But the fear still lingers within him that the woman might reappear. He was looking everywhere, the side of the truck, in the rearview mirror, side mirrors, checking everywhere. Now that morning has arrived, people have gathered there, so a little courage came to Ram Lal as well, who usually reaches home around 5.30 but reached at 8.30. When he arrives home, his mom, who is like a mother to him, asks why he's so late. Ram Lal then narrates this incident to everyone at his home. Hearing this, everyone gets scared, thinking that it's a blessing from God that nothing happened to their son. As I mentioned, a lot could have gone wrong, but thankfully nothing did. Okay, he saw something, got scared, it's all in one place. But now, the most important thing is that the son is safe. So guys, that was Ram Lal's story. The second story I'm sharing with you is about a man named Manohar. Manohar's house was behind the old cemetery, and from the roof of his house, the cemetery could be seen clearly. Every day, he would go to work after crossing that cemetery. Manohar had two children, both quite mischievous. The elder son's name was Rocky, and the younger son was named Vicky. Once during summer vacation, Rocky, Vicky, and their sister Sonia were all together. Around midnight, in a room, they were playing truth and dare. Rocky asks Sonia, Will you take truth or dare? Sonia chooses dare and asks, you won't suggest anything dangerous, right? Rocky, laughing, says, Go, roam on the roof now, and yes, pluck a flower from the pot on the roof. That way, we'll know you went on the roof. Sonia replies, The cemetery is visible from the roof. I'm not going there. Both Rocky and Vicky insist on Sonia going to the roof. Sonia goes to the roof, and as soon as she approaches the flowers in the pot, her gaze falls towards the cemetery. In the cemetery, there's a large dried tree. She sees a beheaded upside-down corpse hanging from that tree. Sonia looks at it, screams loudly, and faints. When Sonia doesn't return from the roof for a long time, Roki and Vicky get scared. They go to the roof and find Sonia unconscious. They quickly call their father Manohar and tell him everything. Manohar says, Why did you three need to play such a game? Roki, you know the kind of news we hear about that cemetery, yet why did you send Sonia to the roof at night? Roki apologizes. Sorry, Dad, I made a mistake. Won't do it again. Manohar warns. If you ever do such a thing again, I'll leave both of you in that cemetery. Manohar asks his daughter Sonia in a worried tone. Sonia, tell me, what did you see that made you faint? In a trembling state, Sonia narrates everything she witnessed. Manohar, having heard similar news about the cemetery before, advises Sonia to be careful with the kids. One day, when Manohar is late returning from work and can't find a ride, he walks home. Meanwhile, Vicky and Rocky discuss Sonia's experience. Rocky speculates that Sonia might be acting out of fear, but Vicky insists he saw her genuine distress. 
Rocky suggests going to the cemetery to investigate, but Vicky refuses, prioritizing his life and advising Rocky not to go either. Despite Vicky's refusal, Rocky doesn't listen. He walks towards the cemetery alone. Opening the cemetery gate, he enters and notices the tree where Sonia had seen a severed upside-down corpse. Rocky stands there, and suddenly an invisible hand grabs his legs. Startled, he screams. On the other side, there is an open grave with blood on it. The unseen hand pulls Rocky and attempts to push him into the grave. Rocky shouts for help as Manohar casually walks back home near the cemetery. As he passes by, he hears Rocky's voice. Recognizing it, he goes into the cemetery, but Rocky is nowhere to be seen. Later, back home, he asks Vicky about Rocky's whereabouts. Vicky replies, Dad, despite my repeated refusals, Rocky went to the cemetery. He wanted to know if Sonia was telling the truth or lying. Manohar said, We don't have any time at all. Go quickly, bring the water from the conch placed in the temple at home. We need to go to the cemetery to find Roki. Vicky brings the water, and then Manohar starts searching for Roki in the cemetery. Manohar sprinkles the water and sees a mark being revealed by someone being dragged. He understands and follows the mark, reaching a grave. Manohar sprinkles water around the grave. Strange voices emanate from the grave, scaring Vicky. Manohar then says, I think cursed spirits have trapped Roki inside this grave. We need to get him out quickly. Keep sprinkling this holy water around. It will protect us from any harm by the spirit. I try to open the grave. Manohar attempts to open that enchanting grave, and eventually, the grave opens. Inside, he finds an unconscious person. Manohar takes Roki to the hospital, and his condition is very serious. After that day, Manohar leaves that house and moves to another one in the city with his entire family. However, the mystery of the graveyard remains unknown to anyone till today. And I hope you liked the story. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel.